Hey guys, it's me Devin, and as you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be doing an announcement video for the k pop 18's February group and challenges. So for January, I picked BAP, and for February, Amanda had picked this group, and the group we are using is, drumroll, GOT7. Now, I used to listen to GOT7, but I stopped after a while because I had gotten into other groups. But I, for the most part, know the members and the songs. I'm just not as up to date. And neither was Amanda, but she wanted to do GOT7, so I let her choose it, and she created some of the challenges as well as me. If you guys do not know, GOT7 is a seven-member boy group under JYP Entertainment. I don't know as much as I do for BAP, but I do know that their debut song was Girls, 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 and I believe their most recent song is Teenager. I think, and if I'm wrong, I'll just put it up on the screen here. So it was difficult for us to come up with some of the challenges since we're not got seven hardcore stands, but we did our best. So let's get on with the challenges. The first challenge is multinational group. Since a few of the members are not from Korea, we decided to use this as a challenge. Mark's from the States, Bam Bam's from Thailand, I believe, and Jackson's from China. So the challenge for multinational group is to read a book with a diverse cast. For this challenge, I have a few examples. My first example would be Eon by Alison Goodman. Not only does this book have a diverse cast because it is set in a fictional East Asian world, but there's also somewhere in here a transgender. This has a big diverse set cast. And my second example is Dragon Champion by E.E. E. Knight. This book is a book that follows the story of Oron, I believe his name is, and he is a young, rare, scare, a young, rare, scaleless dragon. That's the one on the front, but it also has humans involved. So I figured this would be a diverse cast because it not only has humans of many different races, I believe, but it also has the point of view of a dragon. So not only do you have humans, but you also have animals, mythical animals. So this could be a good example as well. The second challenge for GOT7 is Just Right, which is based on their song Just Right. And that challenge is to read a book about a character that relates to you. The song Just Right is all about loving yourself and who you are. We figured the challenge would be to pick a book where you relate to the main character. So for me, there are two options. The first, op the first example, for me personally, because this will differ for every single person, my example is Partials by Dan Wells. This book follows the main character Akira who is a medic in training and there is this virus that does not allow babies to survive after they are born and I figured this would be perfect for me since I am into science and I love science so the point of view of a scientist would be great. And my second example is a book I don't have yet and it's called A Conspiracy of Stars by Olivia A. Cole I believe. And that book also follows a girl who just wants to follow in her family's footsteps and be a scientist that studies their planet's um, plants and animals. So I figured another science slash animal loving book would be great. The third challenge is JJ Project. If you guys don't know GOT7, there is a subunit called JJ Project, which consisted of JB and JR, now known as his real name, Jin Hyung, and they had a song called Bounce. Recently, they did have a comeback, which I think the song is called Tomorrow or something like that. But since it is a subunit of GUT7 and there's two members, we decided to do the challenge, read a book written by two authors. Now for me, I have two examples. Again, I don't know why this keeps happening. My first example is a book that I am hoping to finish in January since it is part of my January BAP challenges. But if I don't, I might get to it in February, and that is Illumine by J. Kristoff and Megan Spooner. And my second example is a book that I was literally like 90% finished, almost, I was 90% finished with, but I just never actually completed the last 10% of the book. And that is Branded by Abby Kettner and Missy Kalakiki. Kalakiki, I forget how to pronounce it. It's been a while. But I actually, oh, and it's actually signed. I forgot about that. But this book came out back in 2013. I'm going to read the back, that way I tell you the exact, um, that way I tell you the exact plot, because I don't want to get anything wrong, because it's been a while since I've read this book. It says, 50 years ago, the commander came into power and murdered all who opposed him. 
In his warped mind, the seven deadly sins were the downfall of society. He created the whole, where sinners are branded according to their sins and might survive a few years, at best. Now lust wraps around my neck like blue fingers strangling me. I've been accused of a crime I did not commit, and now the whole is my new home. This follows a girl named Lexi Hamilton who is falsely accused of the crime of lust and she is sent to this hole and when you get branded in this hole they basically burn a colored collar around your skin. Since her crime was lust they burned her skin blue and that way when you're in the hole you can see which person committed what crime. It basically follows her story of trying to get out of the hole since she was falsely accused and it also has romance and it has an adorable dog companion and I just I cannot wait to finally finish this so this might be on my TBR you never know challenge number four is the choose your bias challenge that we are keeping up with so for this challenge we're gonna list the members we're gonna give you, give you a keyword or two on the members and then give you a challenge based on each member I'm going to read off my little sheet because I don't remember all this. So the first member is Mark, and the keyword that Amanda and I agreed on was snowboarding, since he loves snowboarding. So our challenge is to read a book that's set in the winter or has snow on the cover. And, you know, you can do, I think David Levithan, David Levithan has a few books that have snow on the cover, like Dash and Lily's um, Dash and Lily's Book of Dares, I think, has snow. There's also a book he had a co-written with someone else called Let It Snow. You could do that. Uh, my choice, I only have a few books that are set in winter and most of them are wrapped up in my TBR, but I do have one that's unwrapped. So a choice would be Prisoner of Ice and Snow by Ruth Lauren. This is a middle grade. This book is about a girl whose twin sister is sent to jail at the age of 13 and she wants to go and set her free. The next member is JB. And for the keyword, we decided to do father of the group. He is indeed the father of the group. He is the leader. So our challenge is to read a book with a good father figure representation. Now, I don't know too many books outside of the books that I have read that have a good father figure. Um, I haven't really quite looked any up. But I do know that one of them definitely has to be, I believe in a thing called love by Morin Go or Goo. That one follows a girl who is a Korean American as she tries to use K-drama storylines to fall in love. And her father is prominent throughout the book and it's just an adorable relationship. So if you guys need a book with a good father figure, I definitely recommend that. It is contemporary standalone and you guys will love it, especially those K-drama fans out there. The next member is Jackson and the keyword we decided to use was one of his nicknames and that is wild and sexy and for this one our challenge is just to read a smutty book. Now I personally don't read new adult or smutty books I just I guess haven't found any interest in them but for this one I decided to give two examples. One is Wallbanger by Alice Clayton I believe yeah Wallbanger by Alice Clayton and the other one is Dark Lover. I forget the author's name on that one, but that's a those two are very popular smutty books. One is a contemporary and the other one is a paranormal. The next member is Jin Young, or as he used to be called Junior, and our keyword is actor, since he was in multiple dramas, I believe. And our challenge is to read a book that has been adapted, whether it be in a play form, a movie form, a TV form, anything like that. And there are plenty of examples, there are plenty of YA books that have been adapted. Hey guys, it's Devin from the future. So in this last clip I was talking about movie adaptations or any type of adaptations, but I want to make it clear, you don't have to read a young adult book. I did say YA books that have been adapted, but I meant any type of things. And yes, YA has been adapted a lot, but there have been middle grade books and adult books that have been adapted. So don't feel constrained by the YA genre. You can read any genre you want. All right, back to the video. The one I'm going to recommend would have to be Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This is coming out, I believe, in March as a movie called Love, Simon. And this book is just plain amazing. Such a great story, and I cannot wait to watch the movie. So if you need a book recommendation, I recommend this. 
support. Next member is Young Jay. And for the keyword, we decided to use beautiful voice. And our challenge is just to read a beautiful book. Now that could mean a beautiful cover, a book with beautiful writing, or a book that has a very beautiful, meaningful storyline. Now there are plenty of examples. I could pick Incarnate by Joni Meadows since I haven't read that yet. You know, it's all up to your discretion. There's um, Lainey Taylor, I heard has great writing. I have yet to read her books. But one of the examples that I'm going to give is Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. I read her Girl of Fire and Thorn series last year and it was amazing. So I really cannot wait to get into this. But this cover, do you see how shiny this is? And it's so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. So that's my recommendation. But as I said, it's completely up to you. The second to last member is Bam Bam. And for and Bam Bam's keyword was different voices. And for our challenge, to read a book by an author that's outside their normal genre. Um, one example could be Stephanie Perkins. She wrote those contemporaries, Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door. But then she wrote um, What's Inside My House or something like that, which is supposed to be a thriller type of book. And me personally, I'm having a hard time to find other books besides that example, and I don't really want to read it. So I decided to come up with a second challenge for this. And my second challenge for different voices is to read a book by an author who writes under a pen name. Now there's, you know, JK Rowling wrote under Robert Galbraith, I believe, for her adult crime novels. So I'm going to look through my books and see what book has written, which author has written under a different pen name. I know that Morgan Rhodes of Fallen Kingdoms also writes under a pen name, so I might Maybe read that. We will see. And the final member is my bias, yu gi -Oh. Now, JB was my bias in the very beginning because of JJ Project, but yu gi -Oh just grew on me, and he is just adorable fluffball, but sexy as hell at the same time. I don't, I don't know how he does that combination. But for yu gi -Oh, Amanda and I have come up with the keyword confusing makne because he's just plain old confusing. One minute he's sexy, one minute he's adorably and cute, and it's just, is he really the Machne? Is he? There's no way he can be. So the challenge, we decided to read a book that doesn't fit into its initial genre. An example would be A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas. That book is labeled YA, but if you listen to anybody who's reviewed it, they will say it's definitely new adult because there's a lot of sexy times in it, I heard, because I haven't read it yet. But other than that, I've been having a hard time finding examples. So personally, I'm come up with a second challenge to read a book that has gotten many mixed reviews. There are people who extremely love it and there are people who extremely hate it. One example is by the same author I mentioned before and that's Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. There are people who absolutely adore those se that series and there are people like me who did not understand the hype. So there are plenty of choices of mixed reviews or mixed feelings on books. I don't have an example right now besides the Sarah J Mass Throne of Glass. And I just want to emphasize that you guys don't have to read every member. You're just supposed to pick your bias or pick a challenge that you'd want to do. You don't have to do all seven. You just have to pick one. And if you do other ones, that's fine, but you only have to pick one. I've had people... I've had people ask, do I have to read all the members? And it's, no, you're supposed to pick a book. You're supposed to read a book that's related to your bias or maybe your bias record or just whatever challenge fits you the best. The fifth challenge is labeled Goofballs. And if you've watched any of their V live streams, if you've watched any of their reality shows or when they were on like Weekly Idol or stuff, you will know they are complete goofballs. And for that challenge, Another simple challenge is to read a book that'll make you laugh. Now, I know there are plenty of books out there I've heard that are funny. I've even heard Wallbanger by Alice Clayton, I believe, which is a smutty new adult book, is also very comical. But my choices will either be A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue or My Lady Jane by Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. I heard this book is so funny and I have yet to read it. And I think the companion book is coming out this year as well, which is called My Plain Jane. So I cannot wait and hopefully I will read this in February. The sixth challenge is Agashi, which I think that's how you pronounce it. We wanted to do one based on their light stick because we did one in BAP, but their light stick doesn't quite have a name. 
So instead of just doing Light Stick, we decided to use their fandom name, which I believe is pronounced Agashi, which basic, which in Korean means little bird. And if you say their fandom name, I got seven, Agashi, I got seven, in Korean, it sounds similar to that. For this challenge, we are using their fan color, which is some sort of lime green. And it's going to be a simple challenge of reading a book that has green on the cover. The main choice I might choose for my TBR is The Fixer by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I love Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and obviously, as you can tell, this book is a greenish color all around. So this might be my pick. There's also, like, The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson is a green cover. There's and the final challenge is Seven of Seven, which is based on their album. And that one is the read seven books for seven members. This is no recommendations. This is just read a seventh book. There were six challenges, six books, and this one's all up to you. It's free choice. I am not sure what I will read. Looking around, maybe I'll get to a book I didn't get into January. Maybe I'll complete a series. I'm not sure. But this one's just a freebie. Read any book. So that's it for this announcement. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys will join along in February for our GOT7 edition of our K-Popathon 18. I will leave a link in this I will leave our Twitter link in the description down below as well as Amanda's YouTube in the description down below. I will also list the challenges. So if you join along, let us know in the comments down below or on Twitter with the hashtag #KPopathon18 and I will see you guys soon in another video. Bye.